Hey guys, back here this time to chat on Duke, Virginia Tech, Tuesday, February 26th. Uh, Duke opens minus three and a half. I'm seeing right now four and a half practically everywhere. Total 146 and a half. Uh, so let's first talk briefly on what life's been like for Duke without Zion. They get pummeled by North Carolina. Uh, they go through a first half against Syracuse where uh, they were trailing by five. And they slowly were able to pull away from a Jekyll and Hyde type of team in Syracuse that just completely wasn't able to score late in the game uh, to pull away and cover. Uh, but that final score with Duke winning by 10 was a lot closer than that final score indicates. 10 might have been the biggest lead they had all game. Uh, but either way, R.J. Barrett shoots 14 for 20 in that game. I think he was actually 14 for 17. He might have missed his last three shots. Uh, against that Q zone, which was keying on him, just an absolute outstanding performance from him. Um, he, he really needs to be in the argument for number one overall pick. Uh, just from his just from a length perspective, I think he's easily a three in the NBA um, and a good one at that with his length and his ability to shoot and score. Uh, Zion is a bit of a question mark where he'll fit in from a positional standpoint. Might be a little too big for a three, a little too small for a four. Um, so R.J. Barrett, I, I think you can need, at minimum, is owed the respect to be discussed as the number one overall pick. Uh, but Duke needed every bit of that big game from him against Syracuse because R.J. Barrett bailed them out, um, bailed that offense out a few times to keep runs going. Duke doesn't, you know, with losing Zion, you're losing 20 points a game, 20 plus points a game. You know, where is that where is that extra score going to come from? There were a few key threes made, but I think it was McConnell. Um, you know, and some other guys uh, stepped up as well. But, uh, you know, ultimately it was Barrett that that bolst, uh, boosted them forward. Now, um, what I do want to mention is if Cuse does cover that spread, right, create a quick hypothetical. If they cover that spread or if they win straight up against Duke, right, I'm pretty confident, very confident, this line opens at Duke minus two. And here's why. The market needs to uh, create what they would consider Zion is worth to a game, right? You, you would have watched North Carolina game and how North Carolina blew the doors off him afterwards. And then you'd have to, after he gets hurt, and then if Syracuse is winning the first half and they just kind of cruise and kind of win by five or six points in the second half, um, or even lose by like one or two points in cover in a close game, you know, I think that Duke has to open minus two here. But because Duke is able to pull away late and they see the minus 10, I think the sports books now are feeling we're going to get a lot of Duke money on this game. So whether they think the line's fair or not, they have to make this line, you know, somewhere between three and five. Now, it's, um, like I said, it's currently four and a half. Um, but if you if you look at it, if you take a one game perspe- a one game away here and go backwards, Syracuse was getting five, okay? Virginia Tech is now getting four and a half. Virginia Tech's a much better team than Syracuse. Much better team. So, you know, you can talk about, you know, um, how the teams are different. But regardless, I mean, Syracuse is not a better team than Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is easily on a neutral court, three, four, maybe even, well, I'll say four points better than Syracuse on a neutral court. So really, really like the fact that we got a little market over adjustment here in favor of Duke. The difference with, uh, with you know, Vatek and Cuse is, you know, uh, the Hokies actually like can score. <laughs> they can score. They can make free throws. Uh, Syracuse, you know, cannot consistently do that. They haven't consistently done it all year. Even though they've held the fort at home, and Syracuse is very good defensively, definitely forced Duke into some tough, tough spots, especially early on in that first half. Uh, Virginia Tech is ranked 13th overall in offensive efficiency as per Ken Palm, and they are fourth in the uh, three-point per- and percentage of their points coming from uh, three-point range. Uh, this team has four players that shoot over uh, 40% or over from uh, three-point range and seven players that shoot uh, 35% or better from three-point range. Basically, this team is filled with sharpshooters. Guys just come off the bus making it rain. Um, and, you know, it's it's difficult to defend that for 40 minutes because if you're Duke, in, in this game, if you're Duke and you go on long, long sustain, if you want to get a long sustained run, Virginia Tech hits a three there, hits a three here, hits a three there. You know, they're keeping it within five, keeping it within six, keeping it within five. And and these are all, you know, when Duke's scoring. Duke is going to go through drought. They went through droughts against Syracuse. They're going to go through droughts against Vatek. Vatek's going to slow this game down. They play at a slower pace, but uh, they are extremely efficient on offense. And they are uh, 17th in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. This team passes. They're, co- they're well coached by Buzz Williams, who used to coach Marquette. Always good three-point shooting teams. It, it, you know, it's how he recruits. He loves the loves the loves the three ball. Um, and the difference is now he's playing a little slower. Marquette he used to he used to be very fast paced. This Virginia Tech plays a little slower, but a lot more efficient. The assists, his turnover ratio, as I mentioned, is uh, one of the best in the country. Um, where Tech is susceptible would be on the glass, but uh, to their 
uh, in respect to this game, Duke is not this typical big Duke team, right? Like it's always like Duke always always has the bigs. You know, North Carolina has the three point shooters. You know, when they have that rivalry, uh, this is not your typical big Duke team. Um, you know, they're not amazing on the glass or as good as they typically are. Don't get me wrong, Marcus Bolden and uh, you know Jack White are formidable, but most well, certainly nothing to drool about inside. Um, you know, losing Zion, it's nine, nine boards a game. He's a big presence. I know he's only six, seven, but he rebounds like he's a lot bigger than that. Uh, you know, so where are those extra boards going to come from? And, you know, the fact that the Hokies are a little susceptible there, you, you could find, you know, some extra, extra baskets for Duke there. But, uh, again, you know, Duke is not that good inside. I'm, I'm not going to consider that a huge, a huge loss. Duke does force a ton of turnovers, block a ton of shots. But, uh, again, I think Virginia Tech should be able to hold their own in that respect. Now, Tech only has two losses at home. Louisville and Virginia by an average of seven points. Uh, combined in those games, they shot 23% from three. This is a team that lives and dies with the three. If they're making them, they're practically unbeatable. This is the type of team you want to you want to have in your brackets far in the tournament, especially if you're making multiple brackets. This team can be lights out at three. And ultimately, in the tournament, you get a team like this that gets hot, especially during that run. This is this is the team. Now, I don't think they need to shoot like they shoot the lights out of the building tomorrow to beat Duke. But I do think they're going to have to. They're obviously going to have to make their threes. This is a team that relies on making their threes. But if, if the Syracuse game was any evidence, there will be plenty of open looks for Virginia Tech in this game. Zion losing him is not just his offensive presence; it's his defensive presence. He, you know, he's very disruptive defensively. Uh, you know, so Duke the first game. I mean, their their first full game without him uh, definitely struggled defensively. Even North Carolina scored a ton of points against Duke. Um, ton of easy looks. So I would expect Virginia Tech to get a bunch of good looks. They'll just have to hit those jumpers. And, you know, I have confidence that they'll shoot fairly well from three-point range. Um, so Tech is 1-6 against the spread in their last seven. And the market has finally adjusted too far. Um, I believe uh, this line would be a fair one if Zion were playing. However, he is not. And since he is not, uh, I do believe we're getting, a, we're getting a, a spot here with Virginia Tech with about Two and a half to three and a half points value. Uh, you know, again, I hinted earlier. You know, if I was an odds maker for this game, I would have, I would have thought the realistic line would have been two. But I understand why they didn't open it at two because they would have got absolutely crushed with Duke money if they opened it at two. Uh, so I think that to keep to save face, they need to open this line a little bigger. And, and obviously, early Duke money rolled in already. But uh, I don't, I don't consider that sharp money. I really don't because I, again, Virginia Tech is a is a very talented team, and they're catching a Duke team here off of off of off a struggling, you know, off a, off a tough road win against Syracuse, tougher than maybe they anticipated. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Virginia Tech holds the four here. I'm going to take all four and a half bones with Virginia Tech, um, you know, and I'm even going to have a small percentage on the Hokies money line at plus 155. I don't know where the line's going to go from here. And I say that because I always like to do this with the videos. I can't guarantee, because here's the thing. If this goes to five, I don't know how anybody who bet Syracuse two days ago justifies lay, now laying five with Duke against the Hokies. Because if you felt you got a good number with five against Syracuse literally three days or two days ago, um, how do you justify now laying five against the Hokies in this in this in this spot, same spot on the road? So I don't think this goes to five. But with that said, it very well could. Um, I do believe if it goes to five, it's only going to go backwards. I think four and a half is a great number in this position, in this spot. I do think people will slowly begin to bet this back. But at the end of the day, Duke is a blue-collar team. It gets a lot of blue-collar money. It's going to be one of the only highlighted games on, on you know tomorrow night's slate. So you're going to get that extra money as well. So I can't guarantee you. However, I do like four and a half as the number, which is where I'm seeing everywhere now. So grab that myself along with small percentage of a unit on plus 155 money line. I uh, want to thank you guys for watching the video. Um, Hope you liked it. Hope you found it informative. Uh, if you did like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And feel free to comment below. Um, definitely always interested to hear you guys comment. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Definitely publishing videos weekly. Giving you guys free picks, free information. And uh, I wish uh, wish us all the best of luck with the, with the pick. Definitely like the number here. And uh, thanks for watching.